Right, you guys got another video updating your motherboard BIOS without a CPU in a socket or even a compatible CPU. And we're going to be using the Q flash button here. So I've got a, a gigabyte motherboard here, but the button on the back of these will allow us to use the Q flash to flash the BIOS. Now we don't theoretically need a CPU in here and we don't even need the memory or even a video card. We can still flash the BIOS to prepare the motherboard ready for its 8700G CPU that we're going to be using. Now, a lot of motherboards, when they're shipped uh, from the manufacturer, will need their BIOS flashed to accept a lot of the new Ryzen 5000 series processors. If you have an older generation motherboard, you may need to flash the BIOS to allow it to accept the latest uh, Ryzen 5000 series CPUs as well. So it's always good practice to flash the BIOS. So what I'm going to do here is you don't need to uh, use the RAM or video card or even the CPU at this stage, but because we're going to be building the PC, we might as well prep it and get it all ready. So I've got a power supply here, uh, all powered up and ready to go. I've got a 24 pin in and I've got my CPU uh, cable into the motherboard. I've got my HDMI in there and I'm just going to populate the socket with the 8700G processor. And once that's done, we can put some RAM in and I'll prepare the uh, USB flash drive to put into the motherboard so we can flash the BIOS. Now, you won't be able to get a display because obviously at this stage, the motherboard will not be able to recognize this 8700G processor. And this could be the same for a lot of processors that need the BIOS flashing first before it would even boot or recognize that CPU. So what we're going to do here is we'll get it prepped and get the BIOS flashed and this should then work. So let's go ahead and get the uh, cooler on here. And I'm just going to put the cooler on and then we can screw this down and we should be pretty much good to go once we put some me memory in there. Now to flash the BIOS, you will need a USB flash drive and uh, you're basically going to need to make sure that flash drive is being formatted to FAT32 as well. So I'm just going to put this stick inside here. And once we've done this, I'm going to populate the rest and we'll be ready to go. So let's go ahead and get the flash drive ready. Now, the first thing to do is head over to the motherboard manufacturer's website and you can check here for CPU support to make sure that CPU is supported with that motherboard and it will list them all right here. And I can see the 8700G is supported here. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to go to the BIOS downloads page to download the latest BIOS for this motherboard. Now, on a new motherboard, they're pretty much releasing BIOSes quite quickly. And this is for memory compatibility, stability, and also any bugs or anything like that, and also to support CPU. So let's go ahead and download the very latest BIOS here. And uh, I've done that now. And what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to extract this. So let's go ahead and put this into a folder and extract it. So I'm going to extract all and click extract. And this will extract all the contents, which is going to be our BIOS that we need. So all of this other stuff here, I'm not too worried about. But what we are concerned with is the actual BIOS itself. So there's a load of stuff in here that you don't need to worry about too much. This file right here is the one that we're going to need. So let's get our USB flash drive plugged in and we're going to get this prepped ready. So I've got a flash drive plugged in here. We're going to format it. And we're going to format this to FAT32. It's important that it's FAT32, otherwise it's not going to work. You can give the uh, flash drive volume label here a name. I'm just going to call this BIOS. And then we're going to format the drive. Now it's going to erase all the data on the drive. And now we have a blank drive that is FAT32 and it's ready to go. So now we need to copy the file over and it's this file right here. So we're going to copy this over to our flash drive. So let's go ahead and do that. So right click on it and we can or cut and paste it or copy it, whatever you want to do. But first, we're going to rename it. We're going to call this one gigabyte.bin because we're using a gigabyte motherboard. Yours might be a different name that you need to use. Some tools have a renaming tool and uh, like Asus and things like that. But this is a gigabyte board and it needs to be called gigabyte.bin. And that's what we've done there. So we're now going to copy it over to our flash drive. And there it is right there. And all we need to do now is now put in our USB flash drive into our motherboard. So let's go ahead and do that. Let me quickly show you the Q flash button in more detail. It's this one right here. 
on the back it has a designated USB port that it needs to use and it's this red one right here. Yours might be different so check the manufacturer's website which uh, USB port it is. Sometimes right at the top, sometimes in the middle and it's this button right here which is the Q flash button. So I need to populate this red USB port here with my USB flash drive that I've just done and we can then push this button. Now of course I need to get it all prepped ready but I've already done that as I've shown you before. So I'm going to quickly show you here um, on how to do it. So now I've got it all set up here. We've got our power plugged in. We've got our RAM in here. We've also got our CPU already in and our flash drive is now in here. I need to push that button on the back and you should see it power on like so. There we go. It's now done. And just leave it. You mustn't touch it at this stage. You've got to leave it until it flashes the BIOS. So you can see the light flashing on the back of the IO shield here. So just leave it alone. The fans are spinning uh, on the CPU cooler and also on the actual power supply. If you look at the red light here, this one's flashing. Yours might be amber, but it is flashing. And uh, what we're going to do is let that continue to flash the BIOS. It does take up to 15 minutes, so be patient. And when it's finished, the flashing light should stop and sometimes uh, the CPU cooler fan will stop spinning. And uh, what we're going to do is leave it to do its thing. So at this stage, do not turn off the power because obviously uh, it will be flashing the BIOS at that stage and of course you will end up bricking your motherboard and you don't want to do that. So this way is a little bit more risky because you can't see what's happening on the actual screen. But this method is for people that have got a motherboard like this and they've now got a CPU that is definitely not going to post and you will need to use this method to be able to flash the BIOS. Now you can see the light has gone out, but the CPU fan is still spinning. Just leave it and let it stop. It will then stop and now you will see the BIOS screen here. Now you can see boot failure detected. That's because we don't have a drive plugged into the board itself. But when I push enter, you will see the BIOS right here. And we can now look at the actual BIOS over here. This is the version and you can see the CPU is being recognized, whereas before it wasn't. Anyway, that is it for this video. That is basically how you can flash a Gigabyte motherboard with the Q flash button using a flash drive and you don't even need a CPU. It's very easy to do, but be very careful. Make sure you allow the uh, flashing process to completely stop before you start powering off the system and building your system because of us, as I've said before, you can cause a problem for yourself by bricking the BIOS. So what is the purpose of QFlash and why would you need to use this method? Well, this method is designed for new CPUs that was not supported by the existing BIOS version on that motherboard out of the factory and you would need to flash that BIOS to be able to uh, see the post on the BIOS and also be able to enter the BIOS because you won't get post because the CPU would not be recognized. It's just a way of be able to uh, use this method to get your motherboard to recognize that CPU and it's a pretty easy way to do it because it used to cause a bit of a nightmare for people back in the day. Anyway, with that said, I think that's going to be about it. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Got any questions or any thoughts, then let me know in the comment section below. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members who join my YouTube members group. I really do appreciate the support and I shall catch you in the very next video or I'll see you on the Discord server for a chat. Bye for now.